What I'm going to do in this uh, in this next se session is to actually, you know, kick the tires, and people should follow along to the extent that their laptops are set up, and we can, you know, play it by ear a little bit what we're going to look through. What I want to do is to show you how to bring up, quickly configure, ping, and run the packet tracer. Um, what I've done is to adjust my Vagrant file in a pretty easy way to give me an actual revenue interface so I can get some network traffic going into the going into the data plane. Other thing to say is I want Mr. Emacs number two. Uh, is this the Emacs number two? Yeah, there's Emacs number two. Okay, so I have an Emacs that's running as root, and if you um, if, if you see here, we actually have ETH zero and ETH one. Um, what I want to do is to pick up ETH one, which is on a, pri a private network. So uh, if you're following along in your Vagrant world, what you want to do? Let me just park the sources for a minute. Shut down the interface. With one, and then we say. Now I've gone and oh yeah, before I even start this, so you can follow along more easily. Here in, let's see, VPP. This is the config file. What I've done, um, I don't know exactly what the um, FD.io repo sources look like at the moment. I've gone and turned back on the debug CLI listener. I've turned on the API tracer and I've told it, you know, uh, 1K, uh, you know, 1K worth of pay, you know, socket pages. I'm gonna just tell it to start and then, um, and here I'm going to just tell it to the debug CLI port. Oh, yeah, let's actually not do it that way because we get a bunch of a bunch of blather in it. Um, all right. Yeah, let me let me just do it a, do it a less stupid way for everybody so they can follow along. Right. Um, host name. Uh, tell it. All right, and so there we are in through the debug CLI port in a way where you can actually use the uh, command history a little bit. So um, if we show, show, show interface, I'll tell you what the interfaces are. And I tell you about great proof that that gigabit ethernet 080 is the guy on the private net. So let's configure it a little bit. Uh, set in IP. I don't promise you that, this IP, that the IP address I'm about to splat down here is going to work in your world, but it'll work here. So. Uh, one seven two dot twenty eight dot one twenty eight dot three. Might as well use the same one the the uh, Linux world was using. Make it a slant twenty four set in its state. Row okay. up, and we should see show int show error. Okay, now. Let's just for giggles try pinging that guy. Ping one. Oh, whoop. Yeah. Ping one. Three. You know, and son of a gun. Okay, so there we can ping it a little bit from from the host stack, and show int, and you'll see. You know, we've we've. Um, let me let me just endeavor to make this a little less annoying for people. Widen them out a bit. And so you can see that we've show error is not actually show error. It show things like uh, oh by the way, um, uh, you know show counters. I can you know when when we get into looking at the the sample plugin uh, the, the the Max Swapper graph node, I'll show you how to bump these counters. In general, it, it absolutely pays to add some instrumentation into your, uh, you know, into your code so that folks can see what's going on. Are people actually able to get this stuff to work? Are folks, you know, able, able to, to ping into the world? Have you been able to configure and, uh, you know, and, and ping on your laptops? So, oh, scroll up like so. You know, here's, here's go put an address on the interface and here's turn the interface on. First off, do you see it? You know, if you do show interface, do you see an interface? 
Um, or do you need to adjust your vagrant files to give you a to give you a local net guy? If all you're seeing is the packet generator, um, you can either go adjust the vagrant file in a pretty obvious way. Um, do, fo do folks need need a hand getting their vagrant files adjusted so you get a private network uh, address? Okay, that's actually pretty easy. What you want to do is gracefully to shut down your vagrants with vagrant halt, and then I'll show you for a small fee. Um, let's go make ourselves basic. If you go into, um, and this this is at the you know at the surrounding um, uh, the surrounding laptop level in in the original uh, the place you originally cloned the things. CDVP build root vagrant uh, more vagrant file. And see this guy here. Try a little. Try a little of that. You know, go edit your vagrant file and refire it. Just with you know, make that make that edit, editor of your choice, and then do a little vagrant up action. And Mike, or is or is it just yeah? Hung, Hung will give you a mic there. Thanks. I I built the CentOS image, and I don't think VPP has started on it. <laughs> How do okay. I start it? You, 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 want, you, you want one of the one of the rescue committees. How about Ed? You know, go go grab Ed over there. That's another thing is um, you know, any of the any of the Cisco dudes who have played with this a bunch can give you a hand. Um, so at any rate, if you if you recrank your VMs, you should be able to get uh, that going. Kind of working for people? I mean, you know, make that edit, then just vagrant up it again, and it'll, you know, it should come right back up. Except this time you'll have a private, you know, you'll have a, a private net guy with a DHCP assigned address right off your laptop. Okay, what, up, down? Uh, okay. All right, let me, let me screen it like that. Maybe I ought to write that on the board. The only problem with writing on the board is my handwriting is utterly atrocious. Um, let's see. Can ping dot VM. I just want to get this right, exactly right, or it will mess people up. Uh. Okay, I believe that's exactly the right incantation. So, so is that playing for people? Okay, so now at the Linux level, you want to do what, what I did a second ago, which is to, uh, you'll probably get an ETH1 there. You want to IF config it down and toss the addresses away, as in this right here. And then start up VPP, which should be installed, so on and so forth. And then uh, go through and configure the interface IP address. Um, I don't know that I don't know that the details will be exactly like that on everybody's laptop. Did it, Rob? Did it turn out that that was right for you? Or? Well, I'm actually using a, a greener image. Okay, so, so my, my the the private IP is a little different, but yeah, as as long as you you know pick pick the private IP that the Linux that the uh, uh, the Linux kernel had a minute ago, and you should be good. So people able to able to get that much to work, you able to ping into it from your laptop. Cool. Okay. Well, that was less painful. I mean, you know, if, if one person gets it, it's the clear existence proof that some that everybody will eventually get it. All right. Now, what do we want to do? So, so there you go. So now let's 
Um, I've, been, I've been yapping about the packet tracer. Let's turn it on for a second. And the way you do that is trace add dpdk input 10. Let's just pick 10 arbitrarily. And then, um, uh, all right, let's just do the ping again. And you'll see, OK. So there's a couple of guys. And now I'm going to make this win, you know, dispose of the editor here and make this window a lot taller so that we can see. And now here's the pack, you know, here's, here's your old friend, the packet tracer. Um, what's your, that's got to be an ARP. Oh, that's some random ARP coming from the world. Who doesn't need it? Okay, this is what I want to show you, which is here's a packet coming into PDK input, mumble, 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 some, uh, you know, almost a, almost a descriptor dump. It'll tell you this IP4 layer is telling you, okay, that's the MAC address uh, whose ether type landed the thing in IP4. Then it's an ICOMP, it's an echo request. It goes to Ethernet input, to IP4 input, to IP4 local, to IP4 ICOMP input, echo request, then rewrite local, or, you know, rewrite a packet locally, then out the door. And that's actually, actually how it all kind of works. The packet tracer is really handy for making uh, whatever notes you, you'd like uh, to see uh, for the, the protocol you're implementing. It's really required to implement something half rational in the packet tracer. When we go through the more detailed code, coding tutorial in a little bit, you'll see the mechanics of making stuff appear in the packet trace. Again, this stuff is, is designed so that it's not uh, particularly resource consumptive, but it's real important that people follow through and implement the packet tracer, because otherwise y y you'll be saying to yourself, okay, Traffic's not going anywhere. What's wrong? Why? Um, ultimately, uh, you know, ultimately, it's real handy for people to, uh, you know, to implement a little bit of the packet tracer. And it, it's not it, when it's turned off. It costs, um, I would judge, probably less than a clock cycle per packet. In, in, in the individual graph nodes, that they're typically the packet tracer implementation is either done, go do the whole frame or do nothing, which is the, the common case, or in a loop, you'll end up with a branch predictor just hopping around it because they're all, they, all of the branches that go in to make the individual trace records are predict false.